Hello you amazing hackers, it's great having you back again. Today I'm not alone, I have somebody with me, some of the subscribers. Uh, could you please introduce yourself? Hey brother, this is Nathan here. I'm going to play the game and I'm going to play the game and I'm going to play the game and I'm going to play the game. Most of the bug bounty platforms. Well, I'm new to bug bounty and uh, it's really cute for me to have your support behind. Uh, so just carry on with your session and then I'll be asking a couple of questions at the end. Alright, super. So today I'll be telling you guys a bit about Authorize. Uh, I've prepared a little bit for you as well. So I've got my um, Firefox tab open and my Firefox uh, is pointed to my uh, burp proxy in the proxy settings. So uh, the first thing I have is an account logged in Authorize1 and I also have an account logged in that I'm going to log in now called Authorize2. There we go. Now I'm logged into both accounts and as you can see the request I just did was a login. So I'm just going to do a request here that I can find. For example, I'm going to go to my profile page and when I'm on the profile page, I know that I did it with my user 2, authorize 2 at test.be. So I'm just going to take my cookie from that user and I'm going to paste that cookie in my authorize tab. So when I have this cookie in my authorize tab, I'm going to put my authorize on and I'm going to put perform an action. For example, put something in my basket on user1. Now when I do that action, I can see whether or not it has been enforced. I can see this by the length of both the original request and the modified request. And also, when I uh, put authorize on, I make an unauthorized request. Now, when you, as you can see, the lengths are different, but you can also open the request and the response tab to see what the modified response looks like and what the uh, normal response looks like. Also the unauthenticated response can be found in here. Now another thing you guys can do is you can make sure that unauthenticated requests do not get sent by just unchecking this check mark here. Now when I do this and I make another request, for example I add another product to my basket, I can see that the unauthorized requests get disabled. Now a few things I want to tell you guys, as you can see there have been a few requests that I didn't make. These were to some socket endpoint that I don't have control over. Now what I want to do, <coughs> first of all this filter wasn't in here by default so I'm going to remove it. Now when this filter isn't on you're going to be seeing a lot of things coming in. So the first thing I want to do is I don't want to see the socket messages anymore. So what I can do is in my interception filters I can put a specific filter URL contains and I can do a simple string or a regular expression or URL not contains. In this case I'm going to choose for URL not contains because I do not want to see the socket request. So I'm just going to see, uh, say URL not contains socket.io and when I add these they should no longer be uh, seeing any socket calls. Now soon they will also be uh, making some Firefox calls. For example, if I just open a tab and I go to Google something, you can see that it also uh, comes in my authorize tab. I also don't want this coming in, so I just say only do scope items and you don't need to fill in any content here. Now when I do that, you can see that the Google ad services stop. <clears throat> That's one of the things I wanted to show you guys. Now another thing you can do is you can just save this header. For example, um, <clears throat> this would be authorize2. Now I can make another third account and I can switch between my headers real quick. So that's also one of the things you can do. So you'll have less junk and you'll have an ordered list of who you have and who you don't have as an account. And a few other things you can do are, for example, match and replace. This is something you will have to do, for example, if you Go on Hacker One. there are specific targets that require that you replace your header with a specific user agent so they can identify that it is Hacker One traffic and not just some random hack happening on their servers. Um, of course there are a lot of different unique things you can do with this. I'll show you guys this as well in my next bug bounty tips. Um, and that was pretty much my explanation for now. So I don't know if you have any questions. Uh, yes, th 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 that was really amazing. Thank you. And, uh, what, you know, what are these bypassed and enforced messages and is enforced? 
So um, there are different messages and forced means that it, the program authorized in this case is sure that the rules for um, that the authorization rules are enforced. So when I go and look to a specific uh, request and response, so if I go and look at the modified response, I'll see that I will get this 500 internal server error. Now, I, when I go to the original response, I get a 200 OK back. Um, this means that the server is sure that it gets an error back when it tries to do something it shouldn't be able to. You can also sometimes see an orange is enforced, and that means that there is a question mark behind there. So it's not sure if it's enforced or not. So that means when I go and look at the modified request and the modified response, those will be very similar. I will get a 200 OK message in both cases, but the content will be different, as you can see by the length here. And bypassed means that they are either exactly the same or super, super similar. Uh, so, which essentially means the bypassed one, the bypassed messages. In the bypassed messages, we can perform an IDOR, right? Yeah, exactly. But as you can see, there's a lot of crap in here. For example, the socket messages. So you have to be really careful with what you're doing. There's a get uh, in here. The, this uh, request would be vulnerable to an IDOR. Because as you can see, the or original length and the modified length are both exactly the same. And also when you go and look into the response, I can see exactly the same in there. So. Okay, okay. That's nice, that's nice. So essentially what you do is you just waste your cookies and then you just hover around the tab. You just click on something and then you get a lot of requests. And okay. if you have two bypass statements, you just perform an add. Exactly. You you always verify manually, of course. And what I make sure is that I have my interception filters on properly so that I don't have all of this crap in here. Then I just clear my list and then I just go through the application. So I try everything. I open the basket. I try to add some things. These will come in the tab here. And as you can see, most of these are bypassed already. Um, I can put a delete. Uh, I can try a delete. As you can see, the delete is enforced, but there's no junk in here anymore, no socket calls, and no calls to external targets anymore. That's nice. So how do I write a proper proof of concept for this? As in, I can see that this is bypass button. How do I let the let the org? Okay, that's a really good question. So what I would do is I would just copy this URL and then in the browser where you are logged in as the last authorized user, you just copy and paste the, the request. So this specifically doesn't work. As you can see, you get an um, unauthorized via the browser. So what I would just do is send this re uh, request to the repeater. So I would go specifically to the request and to the modified request in my tab. And I would right click in here, if it works of course, send modified request to repeater. And then I would just put it in here, and as you can see here, it does execute, and that's usually because of the user agent that's being given. Um, so what I would just do is I would tell the people uh, the steps I took. So I would say I went to authorize, uh, I took um, a specific cookie from a low user, from a low authorized user, I pasted it in authorize, it gave me the specific bypass, so I just sent a modified request to the repeater and then I just send it and I get back the contents of the card in this case. Yes, but, but here I have another question. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is you're having two accounts, right? Sorry? You're having two accounts. One is a low-privileged account and another, I suppose, is a high-privileged account. Well, I, I say low and high privileged account in these cases, but of course they're not really low and high privileged. That's to, you can test low and high privileges, but in this case they are just the same privilege. But uh, this is specifically IDOR, so it's it's requesting um, something that isn't yours on the same level. Okay, so which means that you're, you're just pasting one cookie there is one session's cookie, right? One account's cookie. Mm -hmm. you, you paste one account's cookie and then you hover via the other account's uh, page, right? So that is that what you do? Yes, that's exactly right. 
you always make sure that you test on the other user's account. So you copy the cookie of one user and you make sure that you're testing on a different user, of course, because otherwise all of these are going to say bypassed. Yes, yes, yes. Right, right, right. So uh, at the end, you can, you can mention authorizing your POD, right? Is that allowed? Is it okay? Sorry, can you repeat that, please? Uh, is it okay to mention authorize in, in the POC? Because usually people say that automatic scanners are not allowed, and that's it. Well, if the automatic scanner is not allowed, you can just say that you took the cookie of one user, so you made a request with one user. So what I'm going to do now is I, get, I take the get request for the specific basket, I send it to the repeater, and then I just make a request with the low privileged user or the user that's not supposed to access the resource. And then I just take that user's cookie from my proxy tab. I go specifically to what he requested. I take this guy's cookies. And then I just paste them in the repeater tab. And I have done essentially the same. But this time I didn't use any automatic scanners. So that way you can say I didn't use authorize. I just took it from the proxy and I just put it in the repeater and I sent my request. Wow, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. So satisfying. Yeah, because I don't really see authorize as an automatic scanner anyway. <laughs> it's just a request yeah. repeater for me. Now, a few things I also wanted to tell you is that when you use authorize, you can also do um, this also tests for race conditions. So for example, if I just enter the same cookie here, so if I don't take two accounts, if I just take one account and I enter the accounts cookies in here, I can just, this is also testing for race conditions because it's sending the re two requests simultaneously. So that's a, a sidetrack I wanted to give you. And what you can also test for with authorize is just the authorization. So now I have two accounts that are on the same level. I can also log in as an administrator account and I can try testing the administrative functions. And if any of those get bypassed, I have also something I shouldn't be able to do, but that's something we call um, vertical privilege escalation. So we, you do something that you're not supposed to do on a higher level, it's vertical as opposed to your user, so you're doing vertical privilege escalation. And that's also something you can test with Authorize. That's that's All right, man, I don't know if you have any more questions. Uh, I'm done here. I'm done here. So good Thank you very much. Uh, we should do this again. I really enjoyed it. Uh, anybody watching, I hope you like this as well. Uh, please subscribe, please leave a like. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and I hope I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Oh, sorry, I forgot one thing, binary bot. Do you want to give a shout out to anyone, to a channel, to a Twitter account? Yeah, well, you can follow me at uh, with, with Mr. Binary Bot, and then of course I'm available in all platforms that the binary bot. Yesterday, you can find me at All right, I will put your details in the description as well. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Bye. Bye.